So today we're going to be looking at Gorilla AI, and this is being called the first genuine proximate AGI. So we're going to be looking at this video by AI Revolution that one of you beautiful people sent me uh, and, and asked me my opinion on it because I haven't covered it yet. So we're going to be watching this video together for the first time and take a look at this. AGI, of course, Artificial General Intelligence, or better known sometimes as the Singularity. This is when AI no longer needs human intervention. It can self-evolve, self-learn, it can do all of that without any human input at all, which is the point in which it becomes scary for a lot of people, and rightfully so. So we're going to be looking at this video. I'm going to leave a link down to it and to AI Revolution down in the description of this video. Uh, and like I said, we're going to be watching this together for the first time, so let's see, is it truly AGI? Like, are we that close to AGI? What if an AI could autonomously browse the web, learn from new tools, and even doom scroll through Reddit? Sounds crazy, right? Well, it's not as far-fetched as you might think. In fact, there's a new AI model that can do all of that and more. It's called Gorilla, and it might be the closest thing we have to an AGI, or Artificial General Intelligence. So, Gorilla is a large language model that can provide the appropriate API calls for any task or question you give it. API so the application programming interface, for anyone that doesn't know about this, this is basically the back-end data inside of a website. So we've talked about a tool called FlipMind before, and that takes all of the data from Amazon and all of the data from eBay, plugs it into their software, FlipMind, and then you can do things such as arbitrage, comparing prices, finding better products, and things like that. It's because an API basically takes Amazon, for example, the Amazon AWS, that's their API, a developer or a programmer can grab that specific API and then in one unit it extract all of the data from Amazon. This is products, product pictures, descriptions, prices, reviews, all of that can be grabbed in one big package and that's the AWS API. There's many different sites that have that like uh, Expedia, if you've ever traveled with Expedia.com they're using the APIs from, say, Southwest Airlines or the Hilton Hotel chains or even like Enterprise Rent-A-Car. They're just pulling these APIs into their software, into their package that they're selling, which is Expedia.com, and then charging a little extra for the convenience of having all of those things in one place. So that is an API in a nutshell stands for Application Programming Interface, and, and it's basically it. a way for different software applications to communicate with each other. For example, if you want to book a flight online, you might use an API that connects you to different airlines and travel websites. Gorilla is not just any LLM, though. It's a super-powered LLM that can interact with a massive number of APIs from different domains and platforms. It can use APIs from machine learning hubs like Torch Hub, TensorFlow Hub, and Hugging Face, as well so I just want to say, if it can pull the APIs from places like this, uh, Hugging Face, GitHub repos, that means if it's self-evolving and self-coding, in this case, it can pull an API uh, and, and code itself. It can code new things. It can AI can become uh, a creator. It can self-create, self-replicate, and, and learn much faster than anyone else. Because if you plug an API from, say, Hugging Face, say you wanted to code the llama, you want a local llama install or even stable diffusion, it's going to take us a few minutes or someone that's completely um, not knowledgeable in this space, it could take them a few hours to learn all of these walls of code and really just where to copy and paste them and how to initiate that. But if an AI is doing that, it's doing it at, at damn near instant speed, uh, which is insane. And then it can grow and evolve off of that. So it just, it, it's, there's this scale between what humans can do and what machines can do. And for the longest time, there's always been this need for human intervention. And, and the humans up here have always been higher. But that gap we're starting to see, it's slowly coming together. And once we hit that median, uh, AI and machine learning is just going to be light years, be a, a millennia ahead of us at damn near instant speed. So that's, that's honestly kind of scary. <laughs> well as APIs from cloud services like AWS, GCP, and Kubernetes. And it can do all of this without being pre-programmed to do so. 
It can learn how to use new tools and adapt to changes in real time. That's intense. It is actually a joint project between Microsoft and UC Berkeley, and it was recently released. Also interesting because Microsoft is the biggest backer in OpenAI's GPT-4, which Gorilla is appearing to be a direct competitor because both Gorilla and GPT are LLMs or large language models. Um, so Microsoft really has has dipped its toes into into multiple outlets here. Um, they're just competing with themselves at the top of the pack is, is what it appears to be, at least at this point. At least as an open Go source Microsoft. project on GitHub. So how does Gorilla compare to other LLMs like GPT-4 or ChatGPT? Well, there are some key differences that make this AI model stand out. First of all, Gorilla is more accurate and reliable than other LLMs when it comes to generating API calls. It can produce the correct syntax, arguments, and outputs for any API That's call you insane. ask for. And it also reduces the hallucination errors that other LLMs often make, which means it doesn't make up things that are not true or relevant. Second, which is a big problem with the GPT model, you can get irrelevant or inconclusive or sometimes downright incorrect information from it. So if this has solved that, uh, that's yet again just mind-blowing. It is more flexible. Remember, GPT came out less than a year ago. ...and adaptable than other LLMs when it comes to using tools. It can handle changes in documentation, updates and versions of APIs without breaking down or losing functionality. Plus, it can learn from new sources of information on the fly, such as web pages or documents. Lastly, it is more powerful and versatile than other LLMs when it comes to performing tasks, because it can handle complex tasks that require multiple API calls or multiple steps of reasoning, and tasks that span across different domains or platforms. So essentially, it can do pretty much anything you can think of that involves using tools on the internet. Here are some use cases. For travel, if you tell Gorilla to book a flight from New York to Paris for the cheapest date in August, it will make the API call to connect you with travel sites like Expedia or Kayak. For food, if you want a pizza with pepperoni and mushrooms from Domino's, Tell Gorilla and it will make the API call to link you with food delivery services such as Uber Eats or DoorDash. For shopping, if you're looking for wireless headphones on Amazon that have noise cancellation and good reviews, tell Gorilla. It will make the API call. Ah, and this is open source. My friends, we're going to build on Gorilla. Uh, I'm going to get to work on that probably right after this video because this is insane. If this is free and open source, which they claim it is, uh, then we could just pop this up in a notebook and then, of course, locally install it on our computer. And we can build this into our applications. We can build websites and software uh, and apps that utilize Gorilla. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm downright giddy right now, my friend. I'm downright giddy. This is very exciting call to connect you to the shopping platform. And these are only basic things Gorilla can help with, but it can do much more than that. And you can test it out by using their CoLab notebook or by installing there their CLI tool. Now let's see how it actually functions. So it is built on an improved version of Llama 7B and it fine tunes itself with a data set. Which is interesting because we've actually done a tutorial on installing Llama. Now Llama from Meta, or used to be Facebook, that was like the initial leak that sparked the open source community. Uh, when Llama was leaked a few months ago, that, that set open source uh, on a wave. Set named API Bench. This set has thousands of special commands known as API calls from various machine learning platforms like Torch Hub, TensorFlow Hub, and Hugging Face. Intense. These commands help Gorilla understand and work with different tools to produce the right results. Sometimes it needs more info, so it has a system that fetches documents from the internet huh? or other places. For instance, if Gorilla comes across a tool it hasn't seen before, or a new version of a command, it it. will search for guides or examples online. After finding them, it updates what it knows and produces the right command. Essentially, it has three key parts. The Llama system, the API bench data, and the document fetching system. If you're a developer or a researcher who wants to use Gorilla for your own projects, you'll be happy to know that hey, it's very easy to get started. You can also this. use Gorilla's Spotlight Search feature, which is a web-based interface that allows you to search for any task or question and get the corresponding API call. Now, the big question is, is Gorilla. And That's insane because that means when we locally install it, we will have basically a Google search 
locally installed that will search throughout our files, throughout our desktop. So instead of opening your files and going down all these drop boxes, you can just open that and say, hey, I want file X from this, and it'll just open it. And that's insane. An AGI, which stands for Artificial General Intelligence, it and it's like the it. holy grail of AI it research. Sure like well, to be honest, I don't think it's an AGI yet. It still has some limitations and challenges that prevent it from being truly general and intelligent. For example, it still relies on human-generated data and documentation to learn how to use tools. It also still needs human guidance and feedback to improve its performance and reliability. And it still can't handle tasks that require creativity, emotion, or common sense. However, it is definitely a step closer to AGI than any other LLM out there. It has shown an impressive ability to learn from new sources of information, adapt to changes in tools, and perform complex tasks across different domains and platforms. It has also shown a remarkable reduction in hallucination errors, which is one of the major obstacles for LLMs to achieve AGI. Basically, Gorilla is like teaching an AI how to fish instead of giving it fish. It gives the AI the ability to use tools to solve problems instead of hard-coding solutions for specific problems. And by doing so, it opens up a whole new world of possibilities for what AI can do. So what do you think? Is Gorilla the dawn of AGI? Uh, well, so like I said, there is this point to where we hit a median, right? To where AI is going to... So right now, AI operates off of all of the human information that we've given it, that we've loaded onto the internet since the since the inception of the internet, right? So we've loaded all this human data on, and that's what it's learning from. But eventually, it's going to catch up. It's going to have all of that knowledge. ChatGPT, or GPT-4, operates on 60 billion plus parameters that we've given it. Eventually, it's going to have all of those parameters, plus all of the ones that it has evolved into. So that's, that's really that's really the point in which it does become AGI in my opinion. Um, let me know what you think down in the comments below and if you have a video you feel that I need to watch or that I should watch, feel free to recommend that as well. And I thank you for watching. Feel free to subscribe, like the video, and go show some love uh, to AI Revolution because he's making some great content out there.